There has to be a better way of doing this. Huh. is simple. A computer runs a program that opens a WebSocket and waits for someone to connect. Meanwhile, on the phone, we create a WebSocket client and connect to the computer, provided we put the correct IP in port. Now, whenever you touch your phone screen, it gets the position on wireless touch and sends it to the computer. On the computer, it gets that message and turns it into mouse movement. And boom, you have a knockoff drawing tablet. So here we have the WebSocket server code. Now, the first thing we do is import a couple of dependencies. Now, if we ever get any error while importing, we simply show this message and then start downloading the, the dependencies. After, we make these variables. Now, port just handles the port number, left click and right click are just strings that have a single character, and ms just gets a reference to the mouse controller. Pretty simple. Now, Underneath that, we have these functions. Now, this function is what handles most of like the important stuff, which is moving around the mouse, getting the data, reading the data, all of that. Over here in the keyboard scenario, um, these functions are called whenever we press a key. So on press and on release, and we get key as a parameter. Now, as you can see, we're comparing the key that we got towards left click and right click. So, for example, if I press Q, then it will start holding down the left mouse button. And if I release Q, it releases the left mouse button. And then vice versa with right click. Over here, we're simply saying, hey, to use this for on press and use this one for on release. And then we tell it to start. Over here, we basically make the WebSocket serve. So WebSocket is on serve, main as a function. We put an empty string so that I auto selects the IP and then for port right here. And then we just let it run forever. Now onto the mobile client. Over here at global.gd, we're housing four variables, WebSocket URL, the port, is error, and the error message. These two are used for storing the port and the IP, and this is just for reporting back any errors. In UI, we first get references to our input, our connect button, and our out label. And then in our ready function, we first check if we have any errors. And if we do, then we set the text to whatever error message we have. Now, over here, we start connecting functions, so text change gets rerouted over here, and same thing for port, and press gets rerouted connect. So what we do here, if the text error gets changed, we set it at the, as the WebSocket URL, and we replace any spaces with no space. Same thing over here, and when we click on connect, we then switch scenes, and this is where this file comes in. So first thing we do, make a WebSocket client. Then we make three variables, touch position, previous touch position, and connected. These two are vector tools, which is basically a way to represent a position on a 2D screen. And this is just true or false. So in our ready function, we reset the error message. So is error and error message, we put false and none, and then in make connections, we start again connecting these signals towards a function. So connection error and close gets rerouted over here. After that, we initialize, init initiate the connection to the URL. So we make a variable, we call it error, and this returns a status. Now, if the status isn't equal to okay, then we say, all right, we got an error, and so we display this message. And then finally, we switch back. Now, if we do not get an error, then we go to this function. So basically, whenever we touch the screen, it's gonna say, first, is the event a screen, a screen drag? If it is, then we say touch position is equal to all of this. Now, 
What this does, it's it looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. First thing we do is get the touch position and the x value of it. So let's say I touch at 720 and 400. So we get the x, which will be 720, and then we add it by the previous touch position, and we also get the x. We then clamp that value to 0 and 1920. And then we do the exact same thing for the y, 0 and 1080. Then we set previous touch position as the actual position that we touch, not this, okay? From there, we check if we are connected to an actual server. And if we are, then we just send the data. And that's it. So as you can see, I got my phone here, and it's connected. Pretty cool stuff. So let's play some Osu. In conclusion, this was a pretty fun mini project to work on. I won't really recommend this for more advanced stuff since after a while it starts to like lag behind and it's not really precise when it comes to small movements. But like if you want like a portable, like you know, place to draw like on your computer, but like you don't feel like bringing a drawing tablet, then like yeah, just go for it then. But yeah, that's it for this video. Um, see you next year when I upload a one minute Minecraft video of uh, me running diamonds. Thank you.